Hello and welcome back to the Belligerent Duck. I'm Thomas and today I'm going to show you my second Age of Sigma army, the Daughters of Cain. So why the Daughters of Cain? Well, as I said with my first Age of Sigma army, uh, the Legion of Blood or more especially the Vampire's Soul Blight, I really liked the Dark Elves in the old Warhammer Fantasy, but never wanted to start Warhammer Fantasy. So when the Daughters of Cain were announced, I really loved it because I could use the Dark Elves models I liked best, like all the Witch Elves, and had new models that were even uh, formed and shaped by Slanesh, so Snake Ladies and Winged Elves. That was the main reason I, I totally wanted to start with them. So let's start with uh, my favorite model, Rafi. She has two forms. Like the smaller one, um, she's always using as a disguise when she travels to mortal realms. She's a supreme sorceress and some kind of, I think it's a demigod even. And she also has a second form, which is her true self. So no disguise left, how she was uh, transformed while being in the belly of Slanesh into a awesome snake, a winged snake monster. So it's, it's an amazing model. I used uh, Duncan's how to paint video to paint her because I was a bit, uh, how to say, um, intimidated by the whole model and wanted to give it a, a, a good paint job. So it took me quite a while to, to, get, to, to get her fully painted. But I'm very happy with the result and I hope you like it too. So yeah. That's, that's the main centerpiece of my army, I'd say. A lot of people, at least what I read, said that she's not very competitive on the tabletop, but in my opinion, she's well worth the points. And now for the heroes of the Daughters of Cain. Unfortunately, you can get uh, the different heroes all in one box only. So that's like a box with one of those two shrines, with either the Bloodrack Shrine over here, where um, you have an avatar of Cain, which I magnetized on top of it. And here I put a Slaughter Queen on top of the uh, Cauldron of Blood, there. Um, or you can build this kind of shrine as a Blood Rack Shrine with a Medusa on top of it, which I also magnetized. And her weird uh, mirror, which I also magnetized, um, mainly for transporting reasons and also if at some point Games Workshop decides that you can put an avatar of Cain onto there, so I can swap him. So you can, you can uh, in this box you get these options as well as a Hag Queen. You can also put on top of one uh, on the Cauldron of Blood right here. And you can get none of these models uh, separately right now. So there's this one box that you can get with all these options and you can build them how you want, but none of them uh, will be separately. So the Medusa can be on foot or on top of the blood wreck shrine. You can put the Hag Queen on foot, which I did, or on top of the Cauldron of Blood. And you can also put the Slaughter Queen also on foot. But I, I decided to go for the Hag Queen on foot, which will buff my Witch Elves. A Slaughter Queen on top of this shrine, a Cauldron of Blood, not the shrine, but this kind of a shrine, um, to give the a buffing aura to all the units around and to go into combat and the Medusa on top of a shrine hand on foot because I had the model left to make her general and uh, make all my blood sisters also battle line. So these are very nice models and a bit annoying to put together because you have a lot of different uh, pieces that you have to put together and paint. So I highly recommend don't glue everything together and try to paint it afterwards. Keep at least the steps and the minis separately and also the big guy right here. Paint them separately and then in the end put everything together. Otherwise you will go a bit crazy. And what you can also see is that uh, I put some sculpted green stuff in some kind of temple uh, motif on my base because I wanted uh, 
first of all to go for Morafi's Temple of Hagna, which is located in Ulgu, the Realm of Shadow, and I wanted to make some kind of uh, not super barren wasteland, but uh, like some kind of uh, plains with, with which have uh, remains of a temple, like you see on Morafi's sculpted base. I wanted to mimic this on the other large bases of my army. And you can also see some, some uh, green stuff temples right here. I guess you could also use them um, for Scissors of Battle, for example, or other um, armies where you want some kind of temple uh, motif on the base. And now for my battle land troops. The Witch Elves, the MVPs of my army, to be honest, <laughs> and the Scissors of Slaughter. So the Witch Elves and the Sisters of Slaughter, they share uh, a box. As you can see with the very, very similar poses they have, because they only have so few poses, like those. Um, the only thing you exchange is the weapon, the weapons and the head. And that's it, that's it actually. So in order to make the, in my opinion, the Witch Elves viable, you have to feed at least 30 of them, which is expensive in money. They only have five different poses in a box of 10. So you have two twice the same pose in a box, like here. So in order to make this less obvious, I decided to go for different uh, skin colors to give it a bit of variety. And yeah, but you still have like the similar poses in, in all the boxes. Like you have to, if you don't want to go for one temple, which I did, I went for Hagna, as I said before, you have to, uh, Bury it, maybe the hair color or do something or convert them, which I was too lazy to admit. Um, but on the tabletop, I think in the bulk they look very cool. They killed a lot of enemies already, like a lot, also big monsters. When when they are buffed with different prayers and the witch brew from the hair queen, they are just amazing. They kill everything with the uh, fanatism they have. They also resilient at least a bit because they have a 6 plus armor save so it's nothing but having a 6 plus or even 5 plus after save they can uh, at least hold out a bit and for the Sisters of Slaughter that's my first contrast only except the metallics unit um, I think they are also okay -ish. look kinda good for being a very fast paint job and I played them once only for having uh, third troop choice so I'm not sure um, what to think of them but people like them because they have a very large six inch pile in move because of those whips which make them also kind of dangerous and to make them a bit more resilient I equip them not with knives but with the shields and now for the metal side of my army and um, for the blood sisters and the blood stalkers I went with a paint job that you can find in the army book and I wanted to keep uh, both the close combat and the uh, ranged variant of my snake ladies uh, different so I can easily uh, differentiate them on the, on the tabletop. As you can see there's also like pieces of uh, temple on the bases where there's space. I really love the Blood Sisters, the close combat variant and when you take a Medusa as the general they're one of the few battle line choices we have next to the Witch Elves and the uh, uh, Sisters of Slaughter. They have an amazing ability to dish out mortal wounds when they're close enough and do make some damage with their huge claves. The Blood Stalkers, on the other hand, I love the scalps, I really love the models, I, I think they look amazing. But they only have one attack and they hit on threes and I think they wound on threes or something. They have the ability to do a mortal wound on a six. Yeah, they got cheaper with the, with the last um, update. I, I like them, I play them because I like them, but I think they're a bit weak for, for, for what they cost, in my opinion. And now for my Kinderai Life Takers. Those are amazing sculpts, I really like those models, they look amazing. Um, I went for the same technique as from Morafi's wings, for their wings. It's, it's again from the Duncan video. and. Apart from them being super fragile and pointy, which is a pain to transport them, they look very cool. On the tabletop, they 
are okay, they were cheap. So if you want to field them, <laughs> prepare to spend quite some real world money because you need at least five to 10 to make them a bit viable. Um, but I like, I like the look of it. I like uh, the very active and stylish poses they have. And yeah, they look really, really cool. And now for the newest members of my Daughters of Cain army, the Doomfire Warlocks. Um, first I didn't want to get them because they are like the only all male uh, unit, but then I wanted to have some fast moving unit that can also dish out a bit of uh, range attacks and they have some kind of crossbow hidden somewhere in their gloves maybe. And for the paint shop it's the second unit I used uh, nearly only contrast paints for. Uh, except the metallics and I think the job is, is okay. It looks good on the tabletop, that was my, my goal. And I did not spend a lot of time on them because I'm lazy sometimes. <laughs> um, I already fielded them in one uh, battle report even and I'm thinking of getting more than only five. I think they really excel at having a unit of 10 or even 15 of them because the magic gets stronger. And they are a nice addition to the others, uh, more like foot slogging, non riding elves I have. Thanks for watching my little army showcase. I hope you liked it. And if you did not already, please consider subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell notification icon. Do you think that uh, the Daughters of Cain will be combined with Malarian's Dark Elves or Shadow Elves when they're released? And what's your favorite unit from the army? Leave a comment below. And thank you for watching. Happy walking. Bye bye.